The API is organized by routers and each router has a specific domain. So we have a router for Docker. Here you will be able to see what containers are running, deploy a container with Hummingbot, stop a container, remove it, clean the excited containers. Well, all the Docker operations are here. This is really nice and can be extended for other things. What I'm doing here is using the Docker sock of the host machine, passing that into the container and let the container of the Hummingbot API use the Docker from the host machine. Then we have the accounts router. Here you can create new accounts. By accounts, I mean local accounts of the API. Let's say this is the master account, this is a sub account of the client one, account of client two, and so. Into each account, you can also add credentials to it in this router. For example, add the credentials of Binance for the, account, the master account. Then we have the connector router that will tell you what connectors are available, the training rules for a specific connector. This is really nice because you can see what are the training pairs available, what are the mean order amounts in quote or in base assets, the mean price increment, all these things are really important when building configurations for your strategies. And more general information about what are the supported order types, for example, this connector supports only limit and market orders, this other connector supports limit, limit maker. Then we have the portfolio router that will let you know for each account what is the state meaning the state by the amount of units that you have, the value of those units in USD, the historical value of your portfolio over time, and you can also see some aggregated metrics like distribution and so. The train router is probably the best addition of this API because it lets you trade from all the connectors that we have available in Hummingbot with just a single API request. Before, if you want to trade with Hummingbot like a just a simple rebalance, you will need to run a strategy and the strategy will load the order book, all the order management system and so. This is just a connector that has the order management system running. So what you can do is to set the position mode, set the leverage, execute orders, limit maker, limit maker, whatever type of order that you want to execute. You can get the status of your orders. There is a built-in order management system that works for plus four exchanges. It also collects the funding rates. Well, it's very complete. So I would strongly recommend to think about it to maybe write a simple low or mid frequency strategy using it. Then we have the bot orchestration router that is also amazing because with just one request, you can deploy a Hummingbot instance in a separate container in the same machine that will be connected automatically to the broker. So you will be receiving the logs and the performance of each controller in real time. You can also send commands using the broker to it and obviously you can pick the account, the Docker image and the configuration that you want when deploying the bot. The market data is another beautiful router. Here we are supporting real time candles, historical candles, order books, funding rates, and we are going to improve it over time. The design is really nice because we are caching objects that are receiving real time updates and dropping them from the memory in case that they are not requested in X amount of time. Soon we are going to add that feature to the order books and we are going to also add the WebSocket feed because right now the only communication available is via REST, but well, for now it's enough to start testing and writing strategies. Last router is backtesting that, as you know, you can backtest controllers from directional trading or market making using candles. The good thing is that if you are using Binance candles, you can go up to one second. It will take more time, but will be more precise. But I will not recommend to use this router for backtesting because we have another repo called Quant's Lab that I will strongly recommend to use that one in order to do the backtesting. This is only if you already know what you are backtesting and you want to do some experiments in the background. But I think that at this stage, it's better to use the repo of Quant's Lab. Now is your time to start testing all the routers that we have been talking about. The first thing that you will need to do is to go to the Swagger docs that are in 8000 slash docs, authorize your application with the same keys that you put in the setup.sh, in my case is are the default. And then, well, you can play around with the different routers. It's very simple. Just go here, try it out, execute the queries. I don't know, you wanna see what are the active containers. You execute and you get the active containers that are running. 
There is another router that I didn't mention that is the archive bots. This is really nice because when you deploy an instance and you archive it, if it's archived locally, you will be able to see the performance, the traits of the bot, the orders, the executors, the outstanding positions, the config of the controllers. Well, this one is really nice to analyze the performance and is used in the dashboard. And another real nice thing is that from market data, let's say that we want to get the order book of XRPL, uh, XRP RLUSD. Uh, if you execute this query, it will load and now we are going to get the order book query. So it's like you can also get the information from the blockchain uh, for some connectors that are in Hummingbird, right? Like XRPL. And um, you also have order book queries that are really nice um, to instead of doing the looping by yourself to count how much volume is up to this price, you can just use the built-in methods that the order book reader in Cython Hummingbot has and are going to be much more performant. Also, another thing that I didn't mention is that we have the controllers and the script routers. This will let you manage the files of the controllers and the scripts that you are running. And I will let you like create a new controller, list the ones that are available. For example, here we can list the controllers that we have available by type. We can also get available control configs that right now we should not have any config, but well. And you can upload a controller config. You can modify a controller from a bot that is running. So this is really, really cool. It's going to be here. Get a bot controller config. With this one, if you deploy a bot, you will get the config that that bot has running. And you will also uh, are going to be able to update that controller comp. There are some parameters that are more sensitive that you probably don't want to make them updatable. That's why we have this flag that if you configure in the config, this parameter is updatable, you will be able to update it. So well, let's see you next video where we are going to see how you can use the Heimbot API client to write Python scripts to interact with this API.